Let's talk about this um, news piece courtesy of PBS NewsHour regarding why a growing number of American men, I'm going to say men all around the world, find friendship really hard. And I think this is an incredible topic to talk about, especially because I've spoken about it ad nauseum myself on here. Other people are very aware of my thoughts when it comes to friendship. So I'm going to let the video play and I'm going to obviously offer comment throughout the entirety of it and pause it a number of times. So if you want to check it out yourself and you're listening, please make sure you check it out at the PBS NewsHour channel. It's called Why a Growing Number of American Men Say That They're in a Friendship Recession. I will include the link in the description down below if you want to check it out. Let's play. Stuck in what's been dubbed a friendship recession, with 20% of single men now saying they don't have any close friends. And more than half of all men report feeling unsatisfied with the size of their friend groups. I recently traveled to Phoenix to take a closer look at the implications of male loneliness and how some men are confronting it. A great way to start off 2024, just another meetup. On a recent night in Phoenix, a group of men gathered on a rooftop bar to talk about their goals for the new year. I am training for a half marathon, my first one ever. Uh, spend more time with family. I have my grandparents, like my grandfather, and he'll be 91 this year. Why this nigga so uh, sad, man? Why you nigga so sad, man? Cheer up, bro. Make moments like this where I can sit and talk and, you know, look for mentorship and, and, and even offer it. This friends group was started by 38-year-old Quincy Winston. After leaving the military in 2015, Winston moved to Arizona with his wife Latoya and started working as an IT specialist. Maybe he hasn't got any friends because his name is Quincy Winston. That might be the issue. Maybe if your name is Quincy Winston, maybe that's why you don't have any friends. <laughs> Wincy Quincy. <laughs> but for years, he says he struggled to make friends here. Were you feeling lonely and disconnected? Definitely, um, especially when it came to having male friends. Um, I didn't have any, and that, that lack of connection put me in a place where I didn't know exactly what to do about it. So in March of 2022, Winston turned to the social media platform Meetup. Yo, Meetup is so important for serial loners like myself. Meetup is so important. I used to use meetup.com so much back in the day when I used to travel more, especially when I was doing a lot of my techno tourism and going to different locations in Europe, mostly just Berlin, <laughs> to go and club. Um, I would use meetup.com to meet people all the time. And it was great because you would basically have these things where usually they're like language exchanges. And what you would do, yes, Koila knows um, for the tech nerds, yeah. Uh, Meetup is was sorry for move, move on from my point, but Meetup was really popular and booming during the crypto, the beginning of the crypto boom when people were really getting early on the Bitcoin. Like, because I was early on Bitcoin, I was early, but I never bought it. I was just like observing from afar and being involved in some of the things, especially when people were mining and shit right back in the day. And crypto, a lot of the community around crypto was formulated partly on fucking Meetup, especially in, in London. The Silicon's roundabout stuff and people around here, the London scene of crypto guys was primarily on fucking Meetup. It was so sick. Anyway, when I was going to these techno tourism haunts, I'd go on meetup.com and there'd be these great little language exchanges that they'll do or that they'll just do these meetups of expats or like people passing through. And it'll be great because usually the Meetup... Um, events were so often that it'll just be like every day of the week basically in a set bar so if a bar was quiet during the week they'd give this meetup place like you know maybe a subsidized cost on the back of the room and maybe you have to pay or maybe sometimes if you buy a drink you know whatever there's usually some sort of deal involved but they usually have like a corner of the room kind of earmarked out to them and one thing that always surprised me every time i went didn't matter if it was the summer the winter whenever they were always full these meetup and it was always a reminder like oh shit i always used to talk about how kind of lonely i was and how little friends that i had but then i'd go to this place i'd think shit bro this this um situation about lack of friendship is really kind of all over the place and then that's when i started to realize that everybody was capping because i always used to get and again this is a really weird segue but it used to kind of annoy me when people would like show off their friends online and would lead, especially in my little scene, my little creative streetwear, art, fashion, music scene, when someone does something really cool or they get like a good job somewhere, they'd be writing in the flipping comments, oh, I'm so proud of you, I'm so proud of you, all this sort of shit, right? 
and they'll be like, hold on, you don't you don't know this person personally. You don't know them. You don't you've never been to their house. You've never hung out. You're just fucking clout chasing because they have a name and you're trying to pretend like you're friends, but you're not really friends. And I used to it used to be something that kind of would like just annoy me seeing it to myself. But then when you go to these kind of things, you realize, see, most people don't really have a big circle of friends. They like to pretend they have or they like to call people their friends who are mostly acquaintances or work colleagues or something or like industry peers, but they're not actual friends. That's the thing that you mistake. And when you go to these meetup locations, what you see are the realities of life. Most people don't have a big circle of friends because it's just, it's just hard to keep a big circle of friends. The ones that do have circle of friends that are big, ironically enough, they're not always in their friends' comments sucking each other off. They just have their friends. They just exist. The ones who try to, all their friends happen to be cool. It's like, hold on. So all your friends are, are cool. You don't have one friend that is a fucking, um, you know, is a janitor at a fucking elementary school somewhere. You don't have a friend that's a fucking car wash attendant or whatever that fucking name is called or a waiter or something. All your friends happen to have amazing jobs at agencies and brands and stuff. Come on, do over. And decided to invite other men to a local restaurant. I think we went to a restaurant called Papa Do's mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't know who would show up or if anybody would show up. Sounds nerve wracking. Mm hmm. <laughs> And it, it is though, isn't it? Imagine having no friends and then trying to organize a meetup group. Imagine how nervous you'll be. It, you always feel nervous when you put on your own party, when you try and send inf invites to people to come to a dinner you're having. But imagine if you have no friends and then you try to organize a meetup group. Imagine how nervous you'd be feeling about no one turning up. <laughs> imagine. I can understand them for sure. It was. It was awkward, but... Once the guys came in and hearing some of their explanations and what they were looking for, I found out we had a lot more in common than I thought. Seven men showed up for that first event. Are you guys warm? Which Winston okay. says only happened because of his wife. You encouraged him to form this group. Yeah, I wanted him to have a social life, like outside of just us doing things together all the time. That's a good wife. That's a fucking good wife. Because I imagine most wives out there, they're partner didn't have any friends they'd be more than happy with that no you stay here with me less distractions out there <laughs> less danger <laughs> you know what i mean less harlots running around trying to take you away from me you stay right here buddy they actually would like it or you know or the the other hellhole to be in if you're somebody that doesn't have any friends and then your your partner tries to absorb you into their friendship group -hoo -hoo -hoo. that's a different type of hell right you have no friends and then you have to be given friends by somebody else. <laughs> That's really embarrassing. So big up this wife. Time, which was great, but I still felt like he needed to have guy time and guy friends. Yeah, she made it very evident that I need to go make some friends. <laughs> go disappear for go a little disappear. bit. Go <laughs> disappear. Now you have some friends. Yes, you know, come back, but you know, go. Yeah, chicken needs a little bit more time. I'm just grabbing the hot dogs right now. The men still meet Pause. up about once a week we'll for activities any, uh, like this backyard barbecue. Winston's meetup group now has nearly 130 members. Wow. It speaks to the need for connection really cool. that your group is that big. I mean, is that, is that how you see it? Yeah, it does. And, you know, with all the technology that we have to keep us more connected to where we can communicate instantly with anyone, anywhere. But if you notice, we don't talk as much. Mm -hmm. We text more. Mm -hmm a lot gets lost in translation because we just don't have that physical mm. connection. Um, and you know what's really true about that? I've noticed that recently with my um, introduction or with my prevalence to be on Twitter spaces. I was like, there's so many, especially in the football Twitter. Football Twitter is amazing. Football Twitter spaces is one of the best communities out there. It's fuck, the banter is fucking, you know, second to none. But one day recently, I was just listening to a space and I was like, there's like a hundred people here and it's like Saturday at 2 a.m. And people are laughing, they're bussing joke, they're ribbing each other, there's familiarity in what they're saying to each other so you know they know each other in some personal way. I was like, a lot of people don't really have friends, in it? Don't really have people they hang out with in real life, actually, which is actually cool because you get to like, you know, supplement that by doing it online. But it is a, another another kind of example of the realities of it. People like to pretend they have a big social group, but actually, who do you get the chance to speak to a lot really often? Not that many people, but on the internet, 
there's endless amounts of people that you can speak to and you don't really have the the burden of having to you know you don't really have the burden to you know be around all the time as like a friend would you know what i mean without the having responsibilities you can just check in when you jump in on a twitter space but that's something i realized when i was on twitter spaces recently the newest member of the group but i'm also one of the oldest members of the group connection is what 61 year old robert montgomery was looking for what motivated you to join this this group my whole thing was i said i needed friends i need because i didn't have any i got tired of being you know basically isolated at home all the time and i spent my birthday at home by myself and I got, and I didn't, I didn't like that. I was like, okay, no, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with that, basically. I've done that many a times myself. Maybe I'm psychologically damaged. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> Maybe I've got repressed trauma. Maybe, who knows? But I don't think there's anything wrong with celebrating your birthday on your own. If anything, as a man, celebrating a birthday by yourself is maybe the most dignified way to do it. Going outside with a crown thing, I appreciate you, brother. Bigs up, said Oz. Shouts out the bussy on your beanie, too. <laughs> it's not a beanie bussy, it's a fucking balaclava, mate. It's not a beanie bussy. What, 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 what are you talking about? This isn't a flipping, this is not a beanie pussy. Look, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not flicking my little beanie pussy, all right? Look, I'm not flicking it, okay? You guys think I'm flicking it, but I'm not. It's actually a balaclava. How dare you? How bloody dare you honestly have some respect please have some respect okay this is not a beanie look i'm not flicking my little bean okay this is not me flicking my <laughs> bean and making stuff come out nothing's coming out there it's just a <laughs> it's just a bad cloud a big up stina Gu, appreciate you um what i was saying yeah i don't think there's anything wrong with celebrating your birthday on your own i honestly do think as a man it probably is more dignified and it's probably more manly to actually celebrate it by yourself. And what I mean by that is just toasting yourself with a little drink. There's nothing wrong with, you know, buying yourself a nice bottle of nigger whiskey or AKA Nika whiskey or whatever, Buffalo Trace, whatever you like to drink, tiger piss, whatever, right? And pouring yourself out a nice flute of champagne, a nice little drink of whiskey, maybe racking yourself up a couple of lines, right? Maybe crushing a couple of zannies, maybe crushing some perks or whatever, and just having a quick little drink to, to mark the year. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, exactly. Or putting a, or putting a, or putting a, or putting the flipping, you know, putting the flipping Hennessy to the face. That's not actually a more dignified way to celebrate your birthday as a man. Going to a nightclub, or going to a bar or restaurant with a crown on and a big badge, like with your age on it and stuff, like that is, that's very, that's very G-A-Y in the most de derogatory way possible. Respect to solidarity, talking about LGBTQ people. I'm part of your allegiance, right? I'm in the fucking fight. But that's the most G-A-Y thing you could ever do. Rock up at a place as a man with a crown on and your fucking, num your, your year, how old you are in fucking balloon letters and shit nah real men you know put on their favorite movie they grab a bit of liquor or whatever they like a cigar a, a nice fucking beverage whether it's a coca-cola and you make sure you put the flipping glass like treat yourself treat yourself nice bro even if you don't drink booze put a nice little glass in the freezer order yourself a nice tray of ice cube makers from fucking amazon those big chunky ones right or get yourself one that kind of smashes you like a slush puppy pour yourself out a nice beverage of coca-cola orange age whatever and put on a, your favorite movie or something right or your favorite fucking porno scene or something right whatever riley reed whatever you fucking like rack up to put your feet up and have a drink and just celebrate it that way that's actually a far better way to celebrate your birthday than going out with a fucking burger king crown like have some respect <laughs> Montgomery is certainly not alone. Only 21% of men in the U.S. say they get emotional support from friends every week. That's compared to 41% of women. Sometimes as men, we struggle to say, I need you. Richard Reeves is the author of, of <laughs> Boys and Men, Why the Mod... <laughs> Imagine saying to another man, you need them. What? I don't need anyone, bro. Lone wolf. Obviously, when I say these type of things, I sound psychologically damaged. I understand that. Maybe I am, but fuck it. Keep the facade, pe keep the facade up, right? Keep that fence up as a man. Bottle everything down and then explode in the flipping Chris Benoit levels of rage. That's what you need to do as a man.
modern male is struggling, why it matters, and what to do about it. What is driving male loneliness? Why do men have such a hard time forming friendships and keeping them as they progress through life? You can't neglect a friendship and expect it to just grow. You have to work at it. You have to find the time. <laughs> And my observation <laughs> is that many women are just better. <laughs> Young old vibes and girl are killing me. <laughs> I need you, chat. He's not letting me go. <laughs> Those are the two <laughs> that are making me laugh. I need you, chat, and he's not letting me go. Yo, if you know, you know. If you know, you know. Better at doing that and building it into their lives. <laughs> so it's like a purpose. So Reeves also yeah, says over the last four decades, there's been a steady deterioration of male friendships. For men under the age of 30, 15% say they don't have a close friend. And that's up from 3% in 1990. That's maybe the most concerning stat. As much as I'm ribbing on this, I think it's quite concerning that 15% of men under that age don't have one close friend. Because I think that idea of having a big group of friends is really dumb because in reality most people don't have a big group of friends you'll be really lucky if you do especially if you know them since you're like a teenager or even younger you should really have one or two and you should really those should be the friends that you that should be the people that you that you use as a barometer of what friendship actually is and everybody else is an acquaintance or whatever it may be that has to maybe work their way up at, up to achieving that level of familiarity and friendship that's how it should be it shouldn't be like everybody that you meet Anybody they add on Instagram, anybody that you fucking DM is your friend. No, that doesn't is the case. Some people you just know, some people you like hanging out with, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're your friend friend. We have a, a really difficult challenge now of helping men to find places, spaces and ways to be with other men and to sustain those male friendships. Last year, the U.S. Surgeon General issued an advisory outlining the devastating health effects of loneliness and isolation including increased risks for heart disease, strokes, and dementia. You know what also causes isolation? COVID-19, lockdowns, mandatory lockdowns, bro. Government-ordained lockdowns. Police patrolling the streets like we're living in fucking 1984. People's account getting shut down for having a difference of opinion on fucking COVID measures. That actually causes fucking loneliness. I wonder what the graph looked like pre-2019. I wonder how bad loneliness was for men pre-2019. Single men. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. Huh. But again, what do I know? And while men make up slightly less than 50% of the U.S. population, they now account for nearly 80% of all suicides. Jesus Christ. I think these statistics on young male isolation and relatedly of suicide rates is part and parcel of this displacement that we see of time away from friendship. That is gruesome, isn't it? That is gruesome statistic on male suicide, which doesn't get spoke about enough because no one really cares about men, men, you know, male men, well, men's mental health. No one really gives a fuck. You know, mental health, sexual abuse is mostly things that are kind of the pure leader. People only care about it when it's really women, to be fair. Even people that occupy the LGBT kind of group, they don't really get, you know, the same level of attention that women get when it comes to mental health and sexual abuse, unfortunately. It's really unfortunate but what can you do what should we be doing to reverse these trends we do need to be intentional about male friendship we need to be intentional about combating against male loneliness and that we have to create spaces that they're not going to create themselves <laughs> what we do about the men lows. that's at the heart of men's shed a non-profit that began in australia in mm. the 1990s and now has 27 locations across mm. the country yeah. So Try then I have to go through here then. Yeah. The goal here to reach older men who now have the highest rate of suicides in the U.S. I had no idea other men like myself, when they retire from work, they lose. To be fair, if you're this old, you don't need friends. You need someone to look after you. You don't need a friend. Maybe some family, maybe being a home. Why do you need a buddy for when you can barely move? <laughs> when you can barely put together a coherent sentence come on man you're old bro you're gonna expire soon like your time is done what, what do you want friends for where are you going where are you going what are you talking about your conversation you're gonna be talking about football and your conversation is gonna be fucking days long getting through tiny topics come on man you're old give up bro put your feet up close your eyes accept reality just whatever that warm fuzzy feeling is give into it 
step into the door. That's heaven or maybe hell. Come on, bro. Lose their work friends and then most men struggle to get a circle of new friends. 74-year-old Phil Johnson has helped start several you know. men's sheds around Minneapolis. A couple of times a month, these mostly retired men come together to both work on projects and to simply sit around and chat. Men feel more open about talking to guys like themselves about health <laughs> concerns they may have. You're old. You're meant to have health concerns. Hey, guess what? If you didn't look after yourself in your 20s and your 30s and your 40s, guess what happened? You pay for it in your flipping 50s, 60s and 70s and 80s. No surprise, buddy. Hey, no surprise. You know, and this guy, these kind of boomers still have homes that they refuse to give up. They don't give, they don't pass down their homes to their fucking millennial siblings or family relations or Gen Zs. They don't flip in, stand out of the way from in fucking jobs and sectors. They clog up room. They take up all the flipping houses. They never fucking sell them or give them to somebody else younger. And they just fucking take up space. Bruh, when your age is advancing, it is time for you to go. That is the natural order of things. It is what it is. Just accept the fucking reality of it. Oh, my flipping body isn't working the way it did. Bruh, you never did a burpee. In fucking 30 years, you never did a burpee. What do you expect your body would be like when you were 70? Huh? You never run up a flight of stairs. What do you expect your body would be like when you're fucking 60? Huh? Come on, bruh. A couple years ago. A couple years ago, yeah. So the research shows over and over again that men do best when they're doing something and they can do it uh, together. <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing together? They're painting a fucking, they're painting a crucifix. They're, pla they're painting one of those platforms they used to hang black people on. <laughs> what? What's happening here? What are you painting, bro? When I was a kid and we were in this group, it was like a, it was like a fraternity, kind of like a friendship group, actually. And we had these great uniforms we'd wear, these really amazing all-white pristine uniforms. We kind of looked swaggy, you know, like the ditties. But instead of black people, it was white people. Instead of showing our faces, we had hoods. But it was fun. It was really fun. Great times, you know. Everyone knew their place. Nobody stepped out of line. You know, it was quiet. Our, our blonde daughters and blonde wives didn't get raped by these animals and monkeys and fogs it was awesome now you got these fogs and these animals on tvs gyrating around swinging around these necklaces and shit it's really weird what about the men think of all the men think of all the straight white men out there who are old and advancing without friends you know there was a time when we had these guys on leashes you know picking up cotton in fields now these guys are making cotton reef tracksuits and selling them for hundreds and thousands of dollars and becoming millionaires. How dare they? That's my cotton. That's not your cotton reef to reappropriate and, recon and recontextualize. Give me back my cotton reef. <laughs> it's a chance for men to share a laugh, but also <laughs> seek advice. We tackle some tough problems uh, like uh, suicide, which is higher and in the retired men, we've had uh, three men that I know of uh, that have oh, lost shit. their spouses. Oh, oh okay, and okay. See, he started off that sentence being so. If we said, oh, we had three men in a group who, who died, you know? They were at home watching TV, and then all of a sudden they see little Yachi on the screen. And they screamed in horror because that little Yachi kid looked like one of their former slaves. They couldn't, they couldn't believe it. He was wearing a third hat. That was probably worth more than the house I live in now. <laughs> and there's always going to be somebody else in the group can say, hey, here's how I did it. Here's some ideas. Uh, here's something you should try. Why has he got an arm brace on? Why, what's the point? Just let your arm fall off. Why do you have an arm brace on? It's like guys who have like the carpal tunnel in it. Right? It's like, bruh, honestly, do a couple of planks a day or something. Right? Like, come on, hang from a barber at least once a day. Having carpal tunnel every week is is a sign of weakness as well like how weak are your wrists really and truly come on bro how weak are your fucking wrists like are you driving trucks cross country no are you delivering fucking parcels all day no then why do you have carpal tunnel if you work in a fucking office like come on bro please
Why does this guy have a, have, a, have an arm brace? You're 100. It doesn't matter, man. <laughs> Just amputate it. <laughs> Try to do. And no, you're not alone. Yeah. You have brothers. You have a pack. You have a tribe. You have a family away from home. Back in Arizona, I was invited on a morning hike with Quincy Winston's friend group. An outing organized by 29-year-old Nick Crum, who says joining the group has exceeded his expectations. What's that? Black people hiking, yeah? I love that movement as well, by the way. I love how we always have to blackify everything, right? There's a black running clubs. There's black swim them. There's fucking black people hiking. I fucking love it. I love it that there's all these little... Everything has to be blackified. You can't just do stuff. You have to... It always has to be in the context of black. We're a black collective like to run. It's like, black, like, we have to, what, we're trying to blackify hiking. Like, what? I, I didn't know walking around was a solely white thing. <laughs> I didn't know going on a walk was a white thing. Like, what the fuck? I didn't know getting some fresh air and disconnecting from your laptop or your phone was a thing that was only specific to the fucking, you know, melanin deficient of our population. What the fuck is this, man? These blackify things are fucking wild. Just go for a walk, bro. You don't need to fucking put on your Beats by Dre. You don't need to wear your Jordan 11s to fucking make this <laughs> somehow a black experience. Just go and do it, bro. No one gives a fuck. Out in nature, like, you know, how many black people have you seen outside in, in around trees in the forest acting as if it's a spiritual awakening because they went to a fucking forest, because they went on a hike, because they went to the beach? Because they went and sat near an ocean. Bro, people have been doing that for hundreds and millions of years. It's not that big of a deal. Come on, bro. It's just grown so much. And we've been able to meet so many quality people. So many people who actually want to be vulnerable. Talk about the things that we like to talk about. Uh, you know, talk about our life. Um, build that genuine connection with one another. That's exactly what Winston says he hoped for when he created the group. Winston! We need each other and we need to support, uplift, encourage, and motivate other men to, you know, seek friendship. <laughs> Quincy Winston now wants to expand his friend group beyond the Phoenix area, so meetups like this one can become more common for men across the country. Figure out what we can do to bring people together. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeff Bennett in Phoenix. That's fair. Fair enough. Look, I think it's a good thing fundamentally. I know I'm taking a piss, but I think it's a good thing. I think some men need encouragement. Um, I was doing all this stuff for myself. I was searching and seeking these type of things myself. I would go on meet meetups. Um, I'd be attending Reddit meetups. I'd be going on forum meetups. I, I did everything, right? I did it all. Obviously, I didn't really take it further because... I don't really like, as much as I complain about my lack of friends, I don't really make an effort to actually grow and cultivate my group of friends because I don't really like people in real life, really. I kind of like to keep myself to myself. So that maybe explains it. But I think for the guys that need a bit of encouragement, it's good to have these avenues available because friendship is important. I think you do need as a man to have at least one or two group friends. Maybe as a woman, it's different. Maybe women need more more range and maybe women in general are just better at making friends because women are way more emotionally available and open they can just talk about their feelings way better than men can i always talk about how much i repress my feelings and i think men all men do it in all ways all manners of ways so i think it's important to have that platform available to talk about certain things it's really 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 important to say that but but you also have to be careful that you don't compare your lack of friends to how people act on social media because people on social media be lying they be capping big cap on social media they make it seem like they're all friends but they're not really friends they talk behind each other's back they're all clout chasing um they're all trying to suck off each other whatever it may be but it's not actually based on anything some of it's loads of jealousy envy whatever it may be called but there's no actual real friendship there and i would used to say you know one of the things that terms are actual real friend or classify as a real friend, is somebody knowing your actual mum's name. Until that happens, they're not your real friend. But again, what do I know? What do I know? Let's go to the stream chat. What are you guys saying? It's a prom that you get with Steve Crowder out here teaching people how to be a good husband when his motherfucker wouldn't know each end of the screwdriver to use. Exactly, NJ Ranger. That's the one thing I've said as well. I think the, the male, the male, um, what they call it? Um, 
the inspirational leaders or whatever they're called. I've got the term of it, right? The examples out there aren't great. I wish we get to a place in society where we have like a gentleman's version of fresh and fit. That's what I like to see. Again, that Red Pill stuff is nonsense, but I want there to be a cultural evolution because there's definitely, you can rag on Red Pill and you can rag on Stephen Crowell as much as you want and, and fresh and fit, but clearly there's a demand for it. Clearly men, some men want guidance on how to live, how to, you know, um, how to pursue women, you know, what to do in relationships, what kind of hobbies to have, whatever. There's clearly a need for it. I just feel like those guys are the worst examples to follow. They're the worst teachers. They're the worst leaders. Terrible guys, right? Bottom feeder, deplorable, morally bankrupt, you know, lacking in principles, soulless, you know, like horrible people to follow. But there's clearly a need for it. So I would like the evolution there to be like a gentleman's version of Fresh and Fit where there's guys that say, hey, if you want to be a bachelor, if you want to be a fucking man whore, you can do it, but you can do it in a good way. You can actually treat girls nice. You can actually show them a good time. You can actually be a pleasure to hang out with and still be a fucking whore. It's not impossible to do, but they always portray this idea that you have to be this guy that treats people like shit, you know, just like just a nonsense guy that, you know, like looks down on people. And so that's not necessarily how it should be. There should be another way to kind of look at it. But again, I think the guys that live that life are just doing it. They don't want to, you know, take your fucking $49, $49.99 per month. They're not interested. They're just living their life. Do you know what I mean? That's probably the, the, the issue. The guys that don't know shit are the ones that are online trying to sell you stuff. That's a problem, mainly. Um, So big up NJ Ranger. <laughs> Tackle each other. This is just so <laughs> Kyla, this is just a sausage jiu-jitsu <laughs> yeah when you watch jiu-jitsu and you don't care about martial arts <laughs> it does look incredibly homoerotic i think someone said that on twitter the other day actually like straight men are the most homoerotic are actually the most homoerotic people but they're also the most homophobic like i was like you know what that's actually true like, like they actually are because a lot of the stuff that actual real full-blooded you know masculine straights do is very very gay very gay but they're also the kind of guys like oh two guys are kissing on tv Ugh. but it's like bruh why are you why are you riding another man's back why are you slapping another man's bare buttocks in the fucking shower why are you fondling with his dick as a joke like isn't that kind of gay too but anyway what do we know um uh, <laughs> I love hating on boomers as much as Bapa. Exactly the fuss. Um, black yoga groups out here that never take... <laughs> oh my God. Black yoga. What next? Black Pilates. Pilates is too white. I bet... I bet you there's a black Peloton club. I bet you there's a fucking black Peloton club. Blacks for Peloton. BLM Peloton. It's a fucking stationary bike, you fucking idiots. Fucking bike black club. That probably exists, isn't it? Thick boy bike black club, fucking hell! Yeah, Ebony Beach Club, big up um um Elmi or El Mai. Young old vibe says, "I think I speak for all women when I say gay." Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Thank you, thank you for your grace. Uh, <laughs> my uncle's older shit, and he goes swimming every morning. Yeah, big up Seven Dirty, and big up your uncle, top fucking boy, top fucking boy. <laughs> 